Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with a physique update of Charles Griffin who is doing Indie Pro in 12 days and as you guys know there is a lot of great bodybuilders doing this show so it's going to be pretty good actually. The favorite to win this show is of course Justin Rodriguez who was just recently battling against the very best in the world. He was battling against William Bonac for that Boston Pro win, he didn't win the show, he placed second, but it was a close second, you know, he was pushing William Bonac, and William Bonac, in my opinion, beat Brandon Curry at the Arnold Classic a week before that, I don't know how Brandon got that win, but Bonac was the best bodybuilder in my opinion, and Bonac is like top 3 in the world right now and Justin was battling against him and he was holding his own, so it's pretty obvious that Justin is going to win this show based on stats, based on previous shows, based on track record, but in ideal world, there are a couple of bodybuilders who, if they do everything right, if they come in shape, you know, if they peak properly, if they do everything they need to do, if everything goes well for them, they can beat Justin Rodriguez, they can win this show, for example, we never really saw Sibusiso Cotelo against Justin Rodriguez, and he looked freaking awesome, at that uh, posing routine at the Arnold Classic Brazil, we never saw him compared to the other bodybuilders, in my opinion, he probably would have won that show, and I made a video about this, and I have to apologize to the guy, because I thought he doesn't speak English, he wrote in the caption that uh, he missed that show because of miscommunication, because of a language barrier, and I just assumed that the Arnold Classic organizers, promoters, speak freaking English, but it turns out it was everything in Portuguese, for whatever reason, it makes zero sense, there are shows over here in my country, local, like uh, regional shows, uh, there are only a couple of languages that are very similar that we speak around here, but everything is in English, just in case. And this is a huge show, this is Arnold Classic show, and it wasn't in English. This guy needs to, needs to hire a translator or learn to speak Portuguese in order to understand when he needs to go on a stage. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense, but this guy looks freaking awesome, look at this freaking genetics, this is Phil Heath shape with, with wider shoulders, so this is crazy, uh, I've seen a couple of photos and a couple of videos on YouTube of this guy, people were sending me stuff, but I didn't really know what to expect, apparently his back was an issue before, and he improved it significantly, look at his back, it's not a bad back at all, it's a pretty good back actually, um, on those Instagram photos, his legs look uh, smaller, but on the stage, uh, no, they are, they are definitely not small. His coach actually DM'd me and he told me that his legs were never an issue. Uh, so apparently they were taken from a bad angle on Instagram, I don't know. Anyways, from this angle, look at it here. <laughs> these legs are not small, not by any means. Uh, and uh, the back was an issue, he fixed that, he has crazy muscle bellies. The only thing that I would uh, like him to improve on is to bring a little bit tighter glutes. Just a little bit, uh, a little, a tiny layer of body fat is left in that region, as you can see, uh, glutes and hamstrings, maybe a little bit of lower back, just a little bit. And there is just enough time between Arnold Classic Brazil and Indie Pro for him to get in crazy shape. I don't, I wouldn't like them to wait too long, like for the New York Pro or whichever show, Indie Pro would be ideal. If he shows up right, uh, over there with a little bit less body fat, a little bit better shape, I think this guy actually has a chance of beating Justin Rodriguez. For me personally, he looks better. I don't know. I haven't seen them compared. But when I see them individually, Sibu Sisokotelo looks better, for me at least. We'll see. I don't know if he's gonna do that show. I hope he will. Now, back to Charles Griffin. Can this guy win in the pro? Can he beat Justin Rodriguez? Well, his previous track record shows that no, he cannot. But look at this freaking conditioning, it looks like he's bringing some rock hard conditioning, there is 12 more days to harden up even more, and this is looking freaking insane, this back, and now look at the delts here when he flexes them in a side tricep, look at this maturity, this graininess, this hardness, it's really freaking insane. Now, the problem with Charles Griffin, actually with his physique on stage, is actually there are two problems. One of them is his legs, as you can see here, uh, standing next to Akeem, you can see it. it's definitely a big difference. Max Charles on the right also has the same issue, so it's not really a, a great comparison uh, to show you the weakness, 
But even Max Charles has better legs than Charles Griffin. Quads, at least, from the front. And I don't think his legs are small, it's just the way they're shaped. You know, they're, the lateral head is just so thin, so tiny. Uh, he has a lot of mass, like the doctors, like the entire thighs are just big, there is mass, but the shape of the quadricep, I mean, it's all put, it's all like pushed to the sides, and it's all very s slim, you know, in a way, it's not like he has small legs, but just the genetics, the insertion of the, of the muscle is just bad, now that was an issue, uh, how can he fix this, well, simply by growing them as much as he can, and the other problem was the midsection, not just like the bubble gut, he never really had a bubble gut, it's the, the, the shape of it, the structure of it, he always had a blocky waist, you know, pretty wide waist, um, not the prettiest midsection, not prettiest abs, uh, so those two regions, legs and the stomach region, that was his issue. And the main reason why I'm talking about Charles Griffin today is because he's going to be a very interesting addition to the Indie Pro because it looks like he fixed his two problems. I don't know if that's gonna translate to the stage, but as you can see right here, his legs look freaking good, right? I mean, not ideal, they're not big ram legs or anything like that, but do they look small to you now? I wouldn't say so. It looks like he improved the legs. And as far as the waistline, you know, he can never change the skeletal structure, but he learned how to do a vacuum. This is a serious freaking vacuum. It's a really freaking deep vacuum. Like, a lot of classic guys can't pull it this much. So he really, he really became a master at doing vacuums. I just hope he's gonna be able to control that stomach to keep the vacuum through the poses, I try this, I know how hard it is, especially on the stage, when you're dehydrated, when you're under those heavy lights, uh, when you're under a lot of pressure psychologically, uh, to keep a vacuum in and to breathe and, and, and to control it, that's really, really hard, it's a big challenge, but I'm sure he's practicing it, and he realized, this guy is a hard worker apparently, because he realized with that midsection he had before, he wouldn't really have a lot of success. So he changed that by learning how to do a vacuum, and apparently he grew the legs, you know, he probably trained them very hard and did whatever it takes. So we'll see, we'll see how he's gonna look on that stage, because it really looks interesting, right? That he changed those two problems that he had. So I'm really curious to see him and to see how well will he do. But hey, there are some guys who are seriously genetically blessed, like Peter Clancher here. Um, as Milos says in the comment right there, in ideal world, he sees him winning. And uh, I can definitely see that. This guy is so genetically blessed. I mean, his crazy shape, uh, the roundness of the physique, uh, everything is popping. And uh, a lot of details as well. So when Miller says in ideal world, I believe he's referring to him bringing conditioning, coming in, you know, peeled, because he has the shape, he has the mass, he has everything, he improved the back that was his weakness before, and if he comes in peeled, and if he comes in, you know, full, you know, if he peaks properly, and if he's shredded enough, this guy can also win the show. So again, Indy Pro is going to be super competitive, and I can't wait to see it. Before we move on, guys, I just want to introduce to you the classic BCAA product by the Old School Labs. Uh, you guys can click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN if you want to support me and my channel. I just gotta tell you, this product is amazing because it's a high-quality BCA product and trust me, guys, you don't want to pump empty blood in your muscle when you're training, so drinking some BCAAs while working out is gonna definitely help you and it also has probiotics in it, so it's a great thing for your gut. The watermelon flavor is pretty refreshing and this product is actually not expensive at all and if you guys use my code DIVAN, you're gonna get a 12% discount, so again, if you wanna support me on my channel, try this product out and tell me how you like it. Alright, next we have a physique update, or let's say leg update of Chris Bumstead, and what I'm thinking when I'm looking at his legs here is somebody needs to tell him to slow down a little bit, because uh, he needs to remember that he is a classic physique guy, and these legs are starting to look uh, more like bodybuilder's legs, because they are freaking massive, and you can see him squatting six plates for reps, and he's also doing lunges, I think Bulgarian lunges, with the 150s. 
150 pound dumbbells so he's really pushing his legs and i don't know why i don't really see the point i mean like his arms could use some size but other than that he is very complete i just don't really see why he needs to grow his legs that much more i think it would be better if he adds those couple of pounds to his upper body because his legs are already phenomenal and in 2020, 2020, when he won that second Mr. Olympia, when it was a really decisive win, when there was basically no comparison, in uh, 2021 it was pretty much the same story, but I think he looked more dominant in 2020. I think his legs were a little bit big, you know, a little bit too big for classic. Not in a sense that he's going to place worse, like there is basically no chance of Chris losing the title, but, you know, he's the representation of classic physique and, uh, you know, he sets the tone. And me personally, I would prefer that the classic physique Mr. Olympia looks the way he looked, for example, in 2017. I really like this look. Of course, this was a long time ago and he improved on a lot of weaknesses since then. For example, back, his back was much worse back then compared to now. Obviously, he had a couple of body parts to improve, like back, like arms, and he did that, so that's good, he should improve, but maybe be a little bit more careful not to get too big. This size, I like this size, and if he could like stay about the same size, just gain more details, more maturity, comes even in better conditioning, that would be good, at least for me, I would prefer to see a classic physique champion looking like that. And from what I understood, that's basically what they tried to do for 2021. He tried to come as conditioned, as shredded as possible, and he did come more conditioned than the year before. Not as big, not as full like the year before, but more conditioned, though he didn't do any carb up, basically. That's what I said, that he was basically eating the same foods coming to the show, and I think that's why he looked a little bit flat. So I would prefer him to be a little bit lighter in the offseason when he starts prepping so that he can carb up like crazy and really peak well for the show and, you know, look streamlined and, and full and conditioned and shredded and without any stress. Uh, I would prefer that over him trying to get as big as possible and then barely make the weight. There are top open pros who don't have legs big like this. We just talked about Charles uh, Griffin and he doesn't have legs like this. I don't think Justin Rodriguez had legs like this before he stuffed them with oil. So Sibam, right now his legs are absolutely enormous and I don't think he's planning to take it easy anytime soon. So I hope he doesn't ruin his symmetry. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section. All right, next we have Lee Priest who is uh, sort of coming back. Currently, he's uh, trying to make a transformation of his body and uh, he is being coached by Dave Palombo. Now, if you were wondering if he's going to do the Masters Mr. Olympia, uh, here is the comment that you can see somebody asked him to do it. He says no. So apparently we won't see him on Mr. Olympia stage, but does he look good right now? He looks great. Now, the problem with Lee is his right side. As you can see, he's hiding it. I'm not exactly sure what was the problem with it, but his right side atrophied a little, so his left side is definitely his uh, better side, and it is a good side for sure. But as you can see, he looks really good, especially that left side, uh, his arms are looking really big, you know, they always have been big and they stayed big. Delts are looking good, uh, chest is a little bit flatter, but it was never his strong point, not really. Overall, he looks amazing, especially for a 50-year-old, uh, he is turning 50 in July now, so for a retired bodybuilder, uh, retired a long time ago, at this age, he looks phenomenal, I gotta say. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.